All right, um, so I'm Gerhard Mundinger, and the MBA here at the Crane Center. I go by Saul, which is a shortening of my middle name. And today we're talking about feminizing body contouring. For the vast majority of patients, feminizing body contouring really kind of falls into two camps. Most patients were able to achieve the results that you're looking for with liposuction and fat grafting. In some patients, depending upon weight loss, weight gain, how much laxity do you have to your skin, sometimes we need to combine that with removal of skin as well. And the way I explain that to patients is liposuction is a great tool, but all it does is remove fat. With liposuction, you do, you can get some skin tightening. And the analogy I use is air in a balloon. Um, we can take a certain amount of air out of the balloon before we really notice that the shell of the balloon is not as tight as it was. You get to a certain point where you take too much air out of the balloon and you know, for patients you can develop extra skin laxity that can then need to be treated with other means. And it's really up to your surgeon's judgment as to how much we're going to take off, whether or not we're gonna kind of tip that balance between skin tightening with liposuction and increasing any skin laxity that you may already have. Um, so that's always a point of discussion. For most of the patients I see, liposuction typically is adequate. Um, and with that, I'm basically removing adipose fat deposits in portions of your body where cis men typically have them. And then using that technique to accentuate areas of femininity by kind of volume subtraction and areas where you don't want the fat deposits. And then if needed, depending upon what your wants, using that fat to accentuate areas where cis women typically have fat deposits. Um, the most common places I do this is in the abdominal region, lower back, um, inner thigh, outer thigh, and buttock area. Cis men typically have a propensity to de deposit fat in kind of the kind of central, kind of higher area of the belly and lower back. Most cis women don't have fat deposits there. Um, cis women tend to have their fat deposits in their lateral hips, under buttock area, inner thigh area. Um, so typically I'm removing fat from those kind of problem areas and then using that fat to accentuate areas of femininity. Typically I'm depositing the fat in the under buttock area, buttock area, over buttock area, and kind of lateral thigh area. The big risks with liposuction are, I think, number one, patients underestimate how painful liposuction can be. Um, we have some photos that we show patients about bruising. It can be pretty painful. Um, and I think because it's so commonly done, people tend to underestimate that, or surgeons tend to downplay how uncomfortable the recovery from liposuction can be. Any area that you've had liposucted or fat grafted, you need to wear a compression garment for three months after surgery. That is the most important thing that you as a patient can do to optimize your results. And the reason for that is the compression of the garment helps smooth out contour irregularities, it helps distribute grafted fat, and it really does help with skin tightening in those areas where liposuction has been performed. It's very common with fat grafting that we need to do two to three rounds of fat grafting to achieve the results that you want. Some patients have enough fat to do that, some patients don't, and it's really important to be honest and open about what results you want to see versus how much fat you have versus your areas that you think are problem areas of, of concern because in some patients we have almost unlimited fat grafting material and other patients we really don't, especially for a lot of trans women who have been very diligent about working out trying to maintain a youthful body habitus. Um, Fat grafting to the, the thighs, um, hips, and underbuttock area is really no different than fat grafting to other areas with one exception, and that exception is fat grafting to the buttock. Of all the procedures I perform as a plastic surgeon, face, chest, genital area, general body, fat grafting has the highest known incidence of mortality. And the reason for that is there are very large veins in your butt that can basically a oh, lot. Wow. They're, they're so big and there's such a pressure gradient that fat can be sucked into those veins and can end up in your lungs causing a pulmonary embolism which can be fatal. Um, and that I think is true for all of plastic surgery. 
not trying to, to scare you, but just being honest with you that fat grafting carries significant risks, despite how much it's portrayed in the media and how commonly the procedure is performed. Fat grafting on the lateral thighs is generally more comfortable than fat grafting to the buttock. The big issue with fat grafting in the buttock, and again, this kind of depends on how much volume we're gonna graft, um, you can't really sit on your butt for more than five minutes for about three months after surgery. So you can imagine, now that I've told you that, how disruptive that can be to your lifestyle and to your comfort level. Particularly when we're talking about liposucting around the belly area, the lower back area, and then fat grafting that to the buttocks and the lateral thighs, all those areas, as I've already said, are going to be tender, painful, bruised. And you can imagine how much we use these parts for our body, our core area, sitting, sleeping. It's really hard to find a comfortable position those first few weeks after surgery. And again, I think it's something that, that is downplayed both on the patient end and also the surgeon end. Thank you for watching this educational video on feminizing body contouring with liposuction. Should you have any questions, please contact our office or visit us at craneCTS.com. Thank you.